G'day lads, in this video I'll take you through how to use Monte Carlo simulations in Excel so that you can price markets in sports betting. If you want to learn how to do this for any sport and any market, then make sure you click the first link in the description below to join hundreds of others who already know how to do this and become a member of the Excel Lads Patreon. Right now the MLS is about halfway through their season and Messi's Inter Miami are sitting first in their conference. Bet365 have them as clear favourites to win the MLS Cup at $2.62. This is an example of a futures market. It's an event happening in the future. Now lads, whenever you place a bet, you want to be sure that it has a positive expected value. As you saw, Miami is priced at $2.62 to win the MLS. This implies that it has a probability of 38.2%. If you learn that the event is actually 50% likely to occur, then fair decimal odds would be $2. As a result, a bookmaker offering $2.62 would give you a positive expected value, meaning that in the long term, you're expected to profit from the bet. So to find the expected value of Inter Miami winning the MLS, we need to find the event's probability. However, there isn't a straightforward way to do this. At this point in the season, there's 228 games left until the MLS Cup, which is the final of the competition. With three possible outcomes in every match, a win, draw and a loss, the number of potential outcomes is 3 to the power of 228, and this doesn't even account for the range of possible score lines in a match. So clearly, lads, there's too many variables for a simple formula to calculate Miami's probability. However, we can simulate these 228 games numerous times to see the distribution of results, and this process is known as a Monte Carlo simulation. To illustrate, consider rolling a six-sided die. Suppose you don't know the probability of rolling a 6. By using a Monte Carlo simulation, we can simulate rolling the die 10,000 times to see how often a 6 appears. By dividing the number of 6s rolled by the total number of rolls, we can find the experimental probability of rolling a 6. The more trials we conduct, the closer this experimental probability will be to the true probability of 1 sixth. We can apply the same principle to the MLS competition. By simulating the rest of the season, we can find a simulated winner. Running this process 10,000 times gives us a distribution of possible outcomes. But the good news is this process is very easy to do in Excel. Firstly, I've imported a live MLS table and a fixtures and results list from the website Football Reference. I've done this by connecting football reference to my Excel file with a Power Query so that the stats update whenever I select the Refresh All icon in the Data tab. Using this data, I can create a worksheet that summarises each regular season game into columns named Game Number, Home Team, Home Score, Away Score and Away Team using an XLOOKUP function. As only 265 games have been played, the remaining 228 games have a blank cell for the scoreline columns. In order to simulate a season, these remaining games need to be simulated so that a random score is given to each team in the match. These scores can't be completely random though, they've got to be based on the relative strength of each team. We can start by determining the attack and defence ratings for each team in a matchup. The attack rating is calculated by dividing a team's average goals scored per match by the league's average goals per match. Similarly, the defence rating is determined by dividing a team's average goals conceded per match by the league's average goals conceded per match. Next, we need to calculate the expected number of goals for each team in a match, XG. This is done by multiplying the attacking rating of one team by the defensive rating of the opposing team and then multiplying by the league's average goals per game. Let's consider the game where the New York Red Bulls are hosting Toronto. Using the formulas in the previous slide, New York has an attack rating of 1.082, meaning they are 8.2% better than the league average side attacking-wise and a defence rating of 0.0. 873, meaning they concede 12.7% less goals than the average side in the league. On the other hand, Toronto has an attack rating of 0.978 and a defence rating of 1.117, both below average. With these stats, I can calculate the XG for both teams. I'm also going to add a 20% XG advantage to the home team, which has been consistent throughout the season. This can be done by multiplying the home team's expected goals by the square root of 1.2, and then multiplying the away team's expected goals by the reciprocal. This will give us the expected goals for each team in the matchup. To simulate the actual goals scored using these expected goals values, we need to use the binomial inverse function in Excel. The simplified formula looks like this. The function simulates the number of goals scored by a team, treating each potential goal as an independent trial with a small probability. 
The binomial inverse function models a binomial distribution, which is suitable for a situation where you have a fixed number of trials, each with a constant probability of success. When the number of trials, in this case 10,000, becomes very large and the probability of success, xg divided by 10,000, becomes very small, the binomial distribution approximates the Poisson distribution. And as the Poisson distribution is ideal for modeling the number of goals in a soccer match because it describes the probability of a given number of events happening within a fixed interval. That is the number of goals scored in 90 minutes. So lads, by using the binomial inverse function with 10,000 trials, we can simulate these games in a way that aligns with the Poisson distribution, which gets us a realistic outcome based on the attacking and defensive strengths of each team. So that the model is stochastic, meaning that the attacking and defensive strengths of each team updates after every simulation, I'm including the binomial inverse formula within a huge let function after the first game. This formula will retain the scoreline of completed games while simulating matches using the binomial distribution that have yet to be played. By dragging this formula down for all the remaining matches, the remainder of the regular season unfolds with simulated scorelines. Each time I refresh the worksheet, these simulations will automatically update. Next, I'll summarize these outcomes by creating a dynamic table for both the Eastern and Western conferences. To do this, I'll use a series of sum product functions to grab a team's results, and then I'll rank them using the sort function above. This table adjusts in real time whenever I refresh the simulations, reflecting a new simulated season. And now that each team has been seeded, we can simulate the postseason to find a winner of the competition. The playoffs start with a wildcard match between the 8th and 9th seeds of each conference, decided by penalties after normal time. The winners of these matches progress to the round one best of three series to play their respective seeds in a best of three format. The winners advance to the conference semi-finals, which are single elimination games hosted by the higher seeds. The victors then proceed to the conference finals, also single elimination games. And finally, the conference winners compete in the MLS Cup final to decide the champion. And lads, all of this needs to be set up in our spreadsheet. To simplify things, I'll use each team's final attack and defense ratings from the regular season as constants throughout the playoffs. These ratings will update with each new simulated season. Using these fixed ratings, I'll create a new formula with the let function to end the game after 90 minutes. If the game is tied, the ran function will give each team a 50% chance of winning the penalty shootout. The winners of these wildcard matches move on to the round one best of three series to face a first seed in their conference. Second host seventh, third place sixth, and fourth place fifth. Although in real life a third game isn't played in this series if a team is up 2-0, I'll include it to simplify the following formulas. The winners of each series advance to the semi-finals, and here I'll modify the let function again to include 30 minutes of extra time if the game is tied after normal time. This involves dividing a team's XG by 3 to simulate 30 minutes of extra time instead of 90 minutes. If still tied, penalties will decide the winner. The winners move on to the conference finals, and the winners of those go to the MLS Cup. From there, I can determine the winner from the simulated score. And as you can see, lads, we have a total winner for a single simulated season. Now to find the probability of each team winning the MLS Cup, we need to run this season simulation 10,000 times to get a distribution of the results. To do this, I'll create a new worksheet called Season Simulations and list each team horizontally along the first row. Using an if function, I'll return a 1 if the team has won the MLS, that is, they appear in cell L5 of the postseason simulations worksheet, and a 0 if they haven't. I'll drag this formula across for every team, and since there should only be one winner each season, there'll be a single 1 every time I update the simulations. In column A, I'll create a sequence from 1 to 10,000. Beside this, I'll run the formulas to pick up the competition winner for all 10,000 rows. To run these simulations, highlight cells A2 to AD10002, then go to the Data tab, select the What If Analysis icon and choose Data Table. Skip the Row Input cell and for the Column Input cell, select a random cell outside of the data set. Press OK and 10,000 simulated seasons will be generated. Next we need to analyse these simulations. Create a new worksheet called Analysis and using an index match formula, I'll count the number of instances where a team has won in their simulations, indicating that they were champions, and divide by the number of trials, 10,000, to get a probability. To find the fair decimal odds from these probabilities, I'll divide 1 by the percentages in the next column. 
Comparing the odds offered by Bet365, our model shows that Messi's Inter Miami is overvalued. According to these simulations, the fair odds for Inter Miami should be instead around $7.37. The difference is probably due to the popularity of the team considering Messi, Suarez, Busquets and Alba are now playing for them. When bookmakers anticipate a large volume of bets on a particular team, they'll reduce their rods for that market so that their potential payout is lower. And lads, this is a risk management technique called balancing the book. Excluding Inter Miami, we can use the expected value formula to identify undervalued bets. By considering trades with a minimum 10% expected value, we find that profitable teams include Real Salt Lake, the Columbus Crew, LAFC, Seattle Sounders, and FC Dallas. Just keep in mind, lads, that these probabilities were generated using a simple Poisson attack defense model. They can be updated with a more accurate formula that takes into account previous fixture difficulty, player changes such as injury and suspension, and other factors. However, the process for generating the probabilities using the Monte Carlo simulation is the same. Also, lads, Monte Carlo simulations aren't just useful for futures. In another video, I've used Monte Carlo simulations to generate probabilities for the spread, money line, and under over markets in NBA games. In this model, I treated a player's simulated points as the sum of their simulated free throws, two pointers, and three pointers in a match using the binomial distribution. The sum of every player's scores in a match was the team score, which was then simulated 10,000 times to get a distribution of the points for each team. So lads, if you want to download the NBA model and back your tips with data, then make sure you become a member of the Excel Lads Patreon. And any questions you might have about Excel or sports modeling will be answered by myself and the community we have in there. I've also included a free download to this MLS model in the comments section below so that you can re-watch the video and understand the Excel better. Thanks for watching lads.